Hello, I'm Councilmember Mark Carnavali, Cathedral City, and we're out here today at the beautiful Ample Theater. And joining me is uh, Chief Police George Crum and Councilmember uh, Rita Lamb. And uh, we're going to interview the Chief today. He's got some interesting uh, uh, information for us. And I just want to let everybody know we've been practicing uh, social distancing. We're six feet apart. So at this time, we're going to take our masks off so you can hear us clearly. If that's okay with you, or let's do this. Okay, thank you. Uh, on my left, I'd like to introduce Chief uh, Crum. Good morning, Chief. How are you? Good morning, sir. I'm doing well. Thank Good. you. Thank you. Thank you for being here today. Council Member uh, Lamb, thank you for being here. Good morning. Thank you today. for including got... me in this. It's wonderful. Great to see everybody. Great yep. venue. Yep. Yes. So we're going to just start this off right away. Chief, with local news and national news watching police department's procedures uh, nowadays, what is your duty to our community? Well, our duty as, as police officers is to protect and serve this community with, with the utmost dignity and respect. I try to emphasize with, with all of the officers that it's very important to take a step back and treat people the way you would want to be treated if you were in the situation that they were in. And with that comes empathy and the, and the ability to help people, which is what we should be doing out here in our community. Interesting. And uh, you, how many uh, officers do you have patrolling on the streets today? Today I have roughly nine. Nine. Well, I meant in general, the full capacity of the police department in general. How many police officers? Fifty-one. Uh, Fifty-one. Correct. That's really great. And in Police Chief Crum, I was very intrigued. You had talked about um, updating the strategic plan for the police department. What do you see uh, if any, change is coming in the future based on the input you have from your department and the community regarding the strategic plan? Well, when I look at the, you know, a strategic plan, is, as you both know, is a road map into the future. Uh, we, we currently began development of our next five-year strategic plan, and really I'm, I'm putting an emphasis on the needs of our community. How can we better police this community? It, as I look at what's going on in, in the nation in regards to uh, American policing, we should take that opportunity to look within ourselves as police officers and as police departments and, and identify ways in which we can police communities better. Some of that may be uh, looking at certain calls for service that don't necessarily, necessarily require an armed police officer to initially respond to those situations. Uh, we have to look at perhaps adding civilian staff to our police department where they could address uh, non-emergency concerns of our community. Although it may be a police issue, it may not necessarily require that police officer initially to respond. I see. And if I could touch in on that, uh, the council member Lamb and myself and the entire council receive daily reports from uh, Chief Crum. And you would be surprised how long a list is uh, with maybe only nine officers working or six officers uh, working. They hit every, co every call. And some of them is not as important as the others, but they do reach out to every call. And that list is long. Correct. And, and you had talked about um, uh, the Police Advisory Council. What, well, who, would, who would constitute that? What, who is that made up of? So when I, when I was chief from uh, 2014 through 2017, in, in my first tour of duty here, uh, I had developed a, a chief's advisory council. And what I did, probably in the first six months or so, number one, I got to know the community. You know, I came from a different county. And I started meeting people at different city functions and identifying people that I thought could be a benefit to me in providing me direction on how can we better police this community. So I took a cross-section of, of business leaders, uh, residents, and, and other people that, that were heavily involved in the city from a day-to-day -day perspective, but I wanted diversity in the Chief's Advisory Council. I, I wanted people from different diverse groups within the within the city and that's what I was able to accomplish when I was here before. Uh, moving forward there is a Chiefs Advisory Council that was in place when I came back in February of, of 2020. As the pandemic hit then we needed to take a step back 
and I need to reach out, continue to reach out to the rest of them. I have reached out to a few of them to get that council back up and running and then look at the ability to add additional people to that with the goal of meeting most likely monthly and or every other month. And, and we talk about the issues that the whole nation's talking about. Right. And, but we bring it home to Cathedral City. Chief, there's been a lot of talk about use of force on police departments. And of course, we want all of our officers to be safe and go home every night. What are you doing to uh, change or alter their protection without breaking any uh, laws of uh, illegal holds. Have you researched that yet? So I looked at, a after the, the Minneapolis incident with uh, Mr. Floyd and, and Officer Chauvin, I, I looked at, again, internally, what's going on in our department. And the debate came around the choke hold. And in, in, in traditional policing, we've never, ever authorized a choke hold. We did have a control hold called the carotid restraint control hold that most people's perception of that is it, it is a choke hold. So as I looked at our uses of force, I went back five years. Um, when you were on the council before when I was chief, I had asked for uh, funding for a, a software program that allowed me to track all of our contacts with, with the public when it came to uses of force. I went back into five years and saw that we had only used the carotid uh, control hold twice in those five years. It did not seem to be a tactic that our officers were up to speed on in terms of the technique itself. And on June 8th of 2020, I eliminated it from our, our policy and banned the use of, of the carotid control hold. Just out of curiosity, what other uh hold would they resort to? Just a, a physical a force of some kind? That's correct. You know, anytime you engage in, in a combative situation with, with a, a suspect on the street, it's a very fluid movement. And we exercise, uh, we want officers to begin to try to control the situation, ideally verbally. Uh, they, they come into the situation, they have a command presence about them, they should be able to uh, verbally control a situation. That's not always the case. Uh, then they, the, the use of force would need to, to escalate based on the, the suspect's reactions to the officer's commands, things of that nature. Ideally, we would go to uh, wrist locks, control holds such as that, to try to get the individual on the ground in order to facilitate handcuffing of the individual. If that doesn't seem to work, then you would, you would go into the use of your taser and or an impact type weapon. Um, and, and obviously the, the end result and the last resort would be the use of deadly force. A lot, of, a lot of decisions to be made quickly. Very quickly. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we've had over a thousand new residents move into Cathedral City over this last year, which is absolutely wonderful. Yes. How would you how would you characterize to them Cathedral City? Do you have an idea of, because you came back and I, we we're thrilled to death that you came out of retirement, came back to Cathedral City to once again lead the charge because I have been a long time Cathedral City resident and I so appreciated your service um, as a resident here and now I get to be a council member. But how do you, how do you, how would you talk about Cathedral City to our new families that are here? This city is a great city. Uh, when, when I received the call and was asked to, to come back in an interim position initially, uh, I didn't hesitate one bit in, in answering the city manager with, with a yes and coming back here to, again, try to help out and, and make a difference here in the city. The, the city has, ha, is constantly moving. It's constantly evolving. It, it's constantly uh, improving the quality of life uh, of the residents here in our city. Uh, we have a city council that, that cares about our community, cares about our city as a whole, uh, our, our individual departments here in the city that go out every day and, and do the best that we can do. And you know, to our new residents, I would say welcome. You, you have picked the right home and I welcome, uh, I wish them the best in their future uh, in living and shopping and 
dining here. Great, thank you. I couldn't agree more. Safe and well run. I love it. What uh, type of training also do you require for your officers uh, for uh, uh, dealing with the uh, community? So our, initially, our officers go through a, a six-month police academy. Once they come out of the academy, they enter into a four to six month uh, field training officer program where they are with an experienced officer for those four to six months. And once they are able to go out onto their own, so basically once, once they come off of the field training program, you know, we release our officers uh, solo. Every two years they are required to attend uh, perishable skills training. That's required by the Peace Officer Standards and Training through the state of California. Uh, matter of fact, I have officers today attending that perishable skills. And what is that, sir? So perishable skills are, are skills that the state has identified that if we don't continuously train on them, they perish. Um, so it's important that we continue that training. It includes driving, so pursuit driving. It includes uh, use of force, uh, handcuffing techniques, the ability to, to handle uh, suspects that are not complying with us from a physical perspective. Um, so it, it really envelops a lot of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis, and that's a mandatory requirement every two years. Every five years, our officers are required to go through uh, racial identity and, and profiling classes because we want to make sure that our officers are are stopping people for the right reasons. We should never stop people based on, based on race. We should always have probable cause to, to make a stop on an individual. It doesn't matter, it should never matter what, what color that person is when we make contact with those individuals. So that is another requirement. So they get the racial profiling class during the academy and then every five years they are required by the state to, to attend that training. And you know, I just have one last question, and that is, if there were just if there was just one thing that your team needed to provide better um, protection and services to our community, what would that be? There's just one one thing on your wish list. You know, I, I really, I think the best way to answer your question is I don't necessarily look at it as a tangible item. I, I think the best thing to to support this police department, especially in the times that we are in now is already occurring and that's support from our elected officials, it's support from our other uh, departments here in the city, but most importantly it's the enormous support that we get from our community. You know, almost every day I get an email from, from a community member thanking us for our service and, and things of that nature. You know, we are well equipped. Uh, I've never, I've never, uh, having been here twice now, I've never had issues in terms of the ability to obtain equipment that we need. That's never been an issue in this city. We've always had that support. So I, I would have to characterize my answer as it doesn't need to be a tangible item. I would just ask that the community continue to support us and, and understand the mission that we have out there. And, and it is a hard job. These officers uh, go out every single day to ensure the safety of, of our community. And, and that's, that's a very, very important component for us every day. Chief, I know you don't have a crystal ball, but what do you see in the near future uh, for Cathedral City Police Department? Well, I think we continue our mission, which is, is to protect and serve the community. I, I do want to look for additional ways that we can better police this community. I, I touched on it a little bit earlier with the strategic plan as we look at the next five years here in this city. I, I want to kind of absorb the additional dialogue going on in the nation. I want to zero that into how does it impact our city, our police department, our community, and, and look at ways, perhaps what other agencies may be doing that I think may work here in this city. I do want to embrace additional technology as we move forward. I think that, the, that technology, when you look back uh, in 2016, I brought body cameras to the police department. We supplemented our in-car videos so that not only protects the, the community members that we're coming in contact with, but it also protects our police officers. And so the, there are things of that nature that I want to see what's going to evolve, what are things that we can look at to bring here 
uh, to our city to, again, improve our policing of this community. Well, uh, Councilmember Lamb, do you have anything? I, I just want to say I, I, am, I am so grateful as a resident and a councilwoman um, that you are here leading the charge, and um, I feel very confident um, in going forward that this strategic plan and whatever, whatever tweaks and changes that you have and look forward to in the future, they're going to be amazing. So I think we're in good hands. Thank you. Thank you. Well, there you have it. Uh, I hope you are as impressed as I am with this interview with our chief. I feel very confident that uh, Cathedral City will keep on moving. I'm Council Member Mark Carnavali. I'm Council Member Rita Lamb. Thank, Thank you, you for, for watching. watching.